Hello friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon and welcome to the second installment of George Formby Plays Samba, where we take George Formby's right hand techniques and apply them to Brazilian rhythms. Now if you missed last week's lesson, I will link to it here so you can get caught up on the basic rhythm that we're working with. Today we're going to build in the left hand muting as well as the full strumming pattern and then we're going to add the bridge of Antonio Carlos Jovian's Sodanzo Samba. And before we get started on the muting, let's make sure that we're all on the same page with the rhythm and just have a little refresher in the chords that we were working with last week. One, two, three, four. And that's a great starting point, but there's so much more to this than just the rhythm and the nuance is what really makes the groove. So the first thing that we need to add in is some left hand muting. These notes are all actually quite a bit shorter than we're currently playing them. We can think of the vast majority of these as having an eighth note rest after it. So we're going to use left hand muting and I'll link to a video I did on that concept here. But the basic premise is that we're going to play a note and then just release pressure. We're not taking our fingers off the strings. We're just releasing a little bit of pressure to stop the sound. So our first two strums will sound like this. And let's try just straight fours on this without any of our syncopation and then we'll put that in. So we're just gonna strum quarter notes with a little space in between. One, two, three, four. Good. Now, if you remember our pattern from last week, we have those groupings of double down strokes over top of consecutive eighth notes, something that sounds like this. So you have those two quick ones together. And in that instance, we're really going to have a 16th rest. We're still going to have a little break in between those two notes to give it a little space and let it breathe. And we'll see in the next section why this is really important. In addition to that, we're going to do exactly what George Formby did while he played, which is a partial strum on those double down strokes. The first of those quick ones, the 16th note, we're going to do our best just to hit the G string. Maybe we'll hit the C in there as well, and it's not really a big deal at all, but it gives less accent to that note. And then when we land on the next chord, we're displacing that accent. We're putting it on the offbeat, which gives us this feel that we need. So our rhythm is going to sound something like this. Let's try that together on just the C sixth chord. One, two, three, four. Good, and you'll hear that all of the spaces are not identical. While I've notated them really as eighth rests for the vast majority of the time, you have room to play with the length of these notes. So do your best to use your ears and really listen for what you think suits the song appropriately. Now let's put in the next piece of the puzzle. What we've been playing thus far are just down strums. And if you think of samba music as well as George Formby's playing, there's a lot of eighth note up strums in here as well. And that's what we're going to add in to round out the pattern. Now, all of these up strums are going to come on the muted notes that we just did. These are just going to be ghost notes or just a rhythmic push forward, not an actual notated um, sound of the instrument. So we get So we have more of this driving rhythm, which is approximating some of the other rhythms in the rhythm section that we don't have played by other instruments if we're playing solo. Now, if you were just playing with a band and you had a full rhythm section, you could just play the downstrokes we were doing in the last section and it would sound just fine. But this really is that last little bit that gets us there. So let's see exactly where we're placing all of these upstrokes. So our first beat's gonna be the same as we were just doing, just a downstrum with an eighth, eighth rest. And then as we come down, we're gonna do an up strum, but 
a muted upstrom. And all these upstroms, we're gonna do our best to just capture the A string, maybe the E string in there. We don't have to, we don't, we don't wanna go all the way through. We want it to be nice and light. Let's try that together, just looping this little pattern down, space, down, up with a mute. One, two, three, four. Good. Now our double down strum that we have next, that's going to stay the same because they're eighth notes. We don't have an additional up strum in here. So that'll be the same as the last section. But then after this, we're just going to add those up strums in between the rest of the notes. So let me just play the whole pattern nice and slowly because I think for something like this, hearing it is the easiest way to learn it, not me running my mouth about what the rhythm is. It's going to sound like this. All right, and if you're getting used to this, just say the strumming patterns. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, which can be mighty confusing as we're going. Really familiarize yourself with the motion that your hand is doing. Because when we do these double down strums, if you're not used to the Formby style of playing, you're going to find that everything you're doing with the wrist sounds and feels backwards. We're used to doing down strokes on downbeats in the vast majority of music that we play on ukulele. So we need to familiarize ourselves with, well, turning around that whole beat so that it starts to feel natural and gives us this feel. So let's listen to what the whole pattern sounds like together. Not quite at speed, but a little bit up tempo because this type of music really falls in at a higher tempo. It doesn't work at the lower tempo. So it's gonna sound like this. Now the key to doing this is to keep the right hand very light. A lot of times when we speed things up, we tend to bring the volume up as well. But if we strum too hard, we get too much noise coming out of the instrument. We need to be very, very light with how we attack the strings. So let's look at the B section of Sodanzo Samba and get the chords under our fingers. And now a message from our sponsors. And the sponsors are me. If you need some new strings for your uke, please do try the Tin Man's Magic Ukulele Strings. The only strings on the market specifically designed for high G soprano uke. Make your instrument resonate to the moon. Last week we looked at the chords for the A section of Sodanso Samba, so let's tackle the B section this week, and then we'll have all of the chord voicings that we need under our fingers. Now there's not too many new chords in here, but they're going to go by slightly different names than we had in the A section because of how they are functioning in this part of the song. So we're going to start on a 2-5-1 in F, a G minor 7th to C9 to F major 7th. So our G minor 7th will be 3-5-3-5. As you see, it's really the same as that C6th that we played up here, just slid on back. And then our C9th, all we need to do is move our ring finger back. Everything else is a common tone here. Beautiful first change. And then up to an F major 7th, 5, 5, 5, 7. And that's gonna be for two measures. So let's just do these first four without the rhythm in there, just playing the chords themselves. So start on G minor 7th, 2, 3, 4. G minor 7th, C9, up to F 7th. Good. And then we go on, we're in this position, we're going to go to an A minor 7th, which is the same exact thing as the C6 that we play in the A section, but it's just functioning differently here, so we call it an A minor 7th. And this is our 2-5-1 that's going to G, so this is going to be the same movement of notes. We're going to have A minor 7th to D9, just slide that ring finger down. No, same exact thing, just up a whole step, that's all we're doing. And then it's resolving to actually the same chord. What we saw as an F major 7th above is going to be a D minor 9 here. Just have a slightly different tonality. So in the second half, we have A minor 7th, D9, D minor 9. And then we're going to round this out on a G 7th with a flat 9, which is 4, 5, 4, 5. Dominant 7 flat 9s are really just diminished chords spiced up a little bit. So we have A minor 7th. 
D9, D minor 9, G7 flat 9. All right, let's try that much together again, just playing the chords, not worrying about anything else. One, two, three, four, A minor 7th, D9, D minor 9, G7 flat 9. And then we're right back to our A section. So let's play this through, and I'm going to play the rhythm. Feel free to just voice the chords as you play along with this so that we can hear how this bridge fits together. One, two, three, four. I usually just stop on that last chord. There's a little break before we get back into the A section. I hope you all have enjoyed this lesson. I know it's a lot of material, and just remember that it takes a little bit of time to master these things and feel comfortable playing them. If you like this George Formby style of playing, I did write a book called The George Formby Handbook that breaks down his use of these syncopated rhythms that we are applying here. If you would like a printable to go with this lesson, I have that over on my Patreon community, which has all of the chords, the rhythms, the strumming patterns that we talked about. And I'm also going to have a full performance video with Play Along for the two in Sudan Samba later this week over there. I'll see y'all next week.